get everybody get everybody on board helping us out here. As you know, we released a few weeks ago. Um, I did some training videos, got them on the site, did a webinar, and we released the beta version of the new Alchemy system. Okay. Alchemy is still a beta system. It's still in beta. We released it a lot quicker than we usually release a new system um, because a lot of y'all are asking for it and we wanted your help with it. Normally we try to do all the beta testing on the back end and work out every little kink there is before we get it out to you. But uh, there was a lot of testing to do, a lot of you asking for it. So we got it out to you so y'all can help us with the beta test as far as going through and getting familiar with the system. Um, you know, I put some rules out there, and entry and exit rules, stop losses, trailing stops. Wanting you guys to be able to play with it, you know, demo test it, beta test it. Let us know what you think about those rules. Let us know if you found, you know, a little bit different settings on bar sizes or bar times and, and you know, anything with entries and exits or how you feel about, you know, do you see that requiring to have exceeded volume for entries is necessary? Is it not necessary? looking for any and all feedback there okay and uh, so there's a couple of tests though that I'm gonna kind of show you guys today that I'd like to get the general public in on and that's really gonna be mainly what we're covering here okay so um, Zach says I'm still new and learning IZSS should I still watch this webinar or do you think we best to stay focused on iZone Sharpshooter Zach if you're brand new and you're just learning iZone Sharpshooter I'm gonna tell you to stay focused on that um, and not to uh, deviate off into uh, other systems or into beta testing for us but I would tell you to watch this webinar uh, especially if you are trading Forex okay the main thing I'm going to be talking about today we've seen predominantly that uh, the people that are kind of liking the alchemy system seem to like it on Forex because it gives them more entries and that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit today is I want everybody to jump on board with us to do a dual test on iZone sharpshooter versus alchemy on forex but i want to show you a little bit different setting that's going to make a lot of sense to you so zach if you're trading forex definitely you know definitely stay honest we're staying on the webinar so you kind of see what we're doing but if you're brand new and still trying to get a hang of eyes on sharpshooter stick with it don't get off into beta testing for us especially beta testing a system that's not fully nailed down you know stick with what you're doing there so um, but like I said a couple weeks ago for those of you that might have missed out a couple of updates here make sure to check out the new home page of the apex website it's been shortened up it's been cleaned up quite a bit and right here under step number three start elite education I know some of you are like yeah I saw there was some new stuff there but they haven't really looked at it basically the way the site is designed now under education everything is all right in one spot for you so what are you trading you're trading futures forex stocks or cfds then everything you need is right here getting started intro to various markets which explains the different markets the iZone sharpshooter course the alchemy system accessing the room setting up ninja and some other system and helpful links if you're trading nadex spreads well you don't need to go all over the place and watch a million different videos or the forum you go right here nadex spreads on opening accounts with nadex nadex spreads 101 what is a spread how does it work and then your spread trading systems access the room and so on same with binaries everything you need in your world of binaries what is a binary how to trade them get to the room and a lot of people have said oh yeah I saw you cleaned up the site but they really didn't understand that the site is broken down that way now okay so everything you need is literally right there everything you need as far as setting up ninja redoing your data feeds it's all there and I know there's been a lot of people that are like oh yeah whatever you know I know how to do iZone sharpshooter I watched it like three months ago in some older webinars well there's been some additions there's been some changes we've added on some new rules we've added on Trendar in this step-by-step -step training course right here um, whether you go under spreads to watch it or Forex to watch it, iZone Sharpshooter, it's all broken down. There's separate videos about entries and exits. There is cheat sheets for the trend trading. There's cheat, seat, cheat sheets for chop trading. And, you know, we've 
clarified a couple of rules with the chop trading. Uh, we've actually redone this video for swing trading completely and taken out some indicators, clarified some entry and exits there. I've seen a lot of people asking questions uh, in the rooms and in tickets and even in, in the forum um, that are uh, totally 100% addressed and answered in these videos, okay? Um, but, you know, they haven't gone back and watched the videos because some of you have been like, I've been doing this for a while. I've watched those videos way back when. I just, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. I don't need to rewatch videos. Well, if you haven't watched these, you really do need to because there's been some clarifications and updates since videos months ago. And I want you asking questions in the forum. I don't want you to stop doing that. I want you to post questions. I want you to post charts. I want you to mark them up. We want those so we can help you. But literally 90% of the questions I've seen in the forum just over the last two weeks about iZone Sharpshooter are literally answered plainly, boldly, explicitly, clearly in the new videos. And most of the time when I go back and look it up, because any of you that ask a question, uh, whether it be in the room or in the forum or in a ticket, I can literally pull up your username in the back end and I can see step by step on any training course we have, which ones you've watched, what modules you've been through, how far you've gotten through the course, what you've watched or not watched, how you even did on the quizzes. I can see all that. So can Lori and so can the moderators to say, hey, we love your, that you're asking questions, but you haven't even finished the course. So go and check that out. So again, don't stop asking your questions. Go check out the course first because 90% of your questions will be answered there and they'll be answered a lot quicker than waiting on someone else's response or a response in the forum. And a lot of you have things like almost right there. You've got, you know, four out of the five things that you've got. You're just missing one little key. Um, or the other thing I've seen a lot of is not so much that people are missing one thing, but that you're adding in things. That's been the biggest point of confusion I've seen recently is you're adding in rules that for one are either old, old rules, or for two were never ever a rule, you just added it in yourself. Or you're mixing up iZone Sharpshooter trend trading rules with chop trading rules. Like that's been a big one, like on chop trading. Okay, well I, I need iZone squished real close together, and I need a trend catcher, and I need the bar color but I don't need anything else. Or I need the bar color and Trendar, but nothing else. No, you don't need any of those, okay? And you're mixing some things up there, so go back and watch those. Make sure you get some clarifications. Take advantage of the new um, education tab here that's got everything broken down for you step by step. Very, very easy. Um, one of the quick, quick thing just to address, if you go over to the forum, okay, uh, any of you that are using, you know, charts on your own and not just using the charts in the room, um, you've seen a message pop up on NinjaTrader talking about a mandatory upgrade. And if you just type mandatory right there into the forum, it's right here. You've seen a message pop up saying that there's a man, there was a mandatory upgrade on Ninja a few days ago. Um, you know, there have been a couple questions on that from people that haven't logged into Ninja in a couple of days, been using the rooms. If you have any issues or any questions there, just go to the forum, type in mandatory update. This will pop up. Tony put a post in there with some step-by-step -step kind of tips and tricks, troubleshooting if you have any questions at all. So make sure to uh, check that out and walk through those steps if you have any issues whatsoever. Um, this week doesn't look like we have any major rollovers this week, the next couple of days, but just to give you a quick heads up, uh, next week you'll get reminders of these. You'll have reminders in the room and, and tweet it out and Tony will send you messages. He'll put messages up in Ninja and all over to remind you about these rollovers, but I just wanted to touch on it briefly today because it's some major rollovers. It's not just one or two. But next weekend, not only do we have oil, but we've got the four U.S. indices that will be rolling over next week. So keep in mind, again, you'll get a reminder, but keep in mind you need to update your instruments, make sure you roll all those over, and make sure, make sure that you go through and update any um, workspaces that you have saved with these instruments in it, or else it'll lock up your workspaces, it'll lock up Ninja, you'll have a lot of problems. 
Okay, so again, you'll get reminders, but giving you a heads up because this is not just a you know random copper or soybean rollover. These are some main big rollovers all at once to be aware of. So make sure to stay on top of that. Okay. All right. So let's just really jump into it real quick here. Again, alchemy. Let's talk about alchemy for a minute. Um, right here under elite education, I've got alchemy under all the different sections, but alchemy is in here as a beta system. All right. There's a step-by-step -step training course that's released on it. Um, going through the template, the indicators, how to set it up, and entry and exit rules, okay? So again, what we're looking for here with Alchemy is to have everybody testing it, still in beta, we want your input on settings, bar sizes, thoughts, and input. We also wanna compare it to iZone Sharpshooter, all right? Not only do we wanna get your input on any ways to improve Alchemy, but we also wanna look at, hey, do we need Alchemy? We have eyes on sharpshooter. Is alchemy that much better? Is alchemy worth even having? Is it worth having two systems that use some of the same indicators like that? Does alchemy catch more trades than eyes on sharpshooter? Okay, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Does it catch more trades, but there's more choppy trades? There's, you know, we wanna compare those two. Or is there some type of combination of the two systems that we ultimately wanna have? If it's two systems, then it's two systems and no problem at all, okay? And we're not saying we only want one. We're just saying, do we need both? Is one that much better than the other? Is there a combination of the two? Some people have, suge some people have suggested, well, I prefer ISO and Sharpshooter when I'm trading futures, like the stock indices and commodities, but I really like Alchemy with trading Forex, okay? because I get better entries or I get more entries with Alchemy when I'm trading Forex. And that may be the case. I'm not saying one or the other. I'm saying we wanna test the two out, check some different settings, see if one's better than the other, see if there's a way to combine the two. We just want you all in on the test. And as you know, what we're having everybody do is they test this out, is go over to the trading questions forum here, scroll down to S10, and you'll see all of our different systems. And here's the Apex Alchemy trading system. And it's a beta system and people are posting in here. You know, questions, success. Hey, I found that, you know, this is better here. Here's some ways to maximize. I've been playing with bar sizes. Put all of your discussion in here so that everyone else can see it. See your questions, see your findings, see your issues. You know, if you're saying, hey, I, I think I'm finding that this works a little better here. Um, you know, this particular Forex instrument, for example, seems to work a little better with this bar size, okay? Like, you know, with most of them, we have 31260. Well, you might say, well, I'm finding on, finding on this one particular instrument that three ticks is just too quick, you know, and I'm using four, or I'm using six, or whatever it may be. You know, I'm using so 60 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. Throw that in there. Let's put it in there, let's let um, you know, other people test it out as well, okay? So make sure as you're testing to pop it in there. So the main thing I wanna talk about today is Forex, because that's what I've been hearing a lot of, is people saying, hey, I like eyes on Sharpshooter better for futures, but I like Alchemy on Forex. Okay, and here's why, and here's what I want you guys to test. Okay, let me pull up, um, here's a pound yen chart, okay, and let me pull up a pound yen chart here on um, iZone Sharpshooter, okay? Now, here's the biggest complaint that I've heard about iZone Sharpshooter on Forex, okay? First of all, let me address one thing. When we're trading futures like TF or NQ or YM, we use, as you know, eight, 10, and five on the bar sizes, right? Okay, well, the first mistake I've seen a lot of people make 
is they'll want to go over and they'll test trading Forex and they don't change their bar sizes. The first thing they'll do is they'll go over to Forex also using eight 10 tick bars and it just doesn't line up for them. Okay, you have to use the smaller bar sizes for Forex. So that's the first thing. Make sure you're using the 312, okay, when you're using iZone Sharpshooter on Forex. But here's the main complaint I've heard when people say, hey, I tried iZone Sharpshooter on Forex. I even changed it to 312 and 60 minute. And the complaint you see or I hear is exactly what you see in front of you here, okay? People say, I don't get enough entries. The entries don't seem to line up with iZone Sharpshooter. Have any of you guys felt that way? Or have any of you guys found that? That, hey, even when I use 312 on Forex, iZone Sharpshooter entries don't line up. As an example, right here. I get my setup bar a bar too early. I get my setup bar here a bar too early, so I couldn't take this one. Look at this big downtrend. I got my setup bar too early. Okay, are you guys seeing that? Have y'all seen that? All right, well, let's talk about that. It's because of that issue right there that a lot of you are saying, I just prefer to trade alchemy because I don't have to worry about that when all this lines up here I can just take it when it lines up here I can take it when it lines up here I can take it when it lines up here I can take it that's why a lot of you are saying you prefer alchemy right because of that all right well here's the issue and here's how you fix it because what I want you guys to do is I want you to test iZone sharpshooter and alchemy side by side and I want to know if there really is a difference between the two. Let me let me show you something. Okay. <clears throat> Notice here. Let's take a look at a few things. All right. So see right here. Where's our bar? Where's our setup bar? Whoop. Right there. It's too early, right? So we didn't get that long. Right here. Where's our short setup bar? Right here. So we didn't get that short. Right? Everybody see that? I want you to watch something. Right click on the chart. All I'm using here is the regular iZone Sharpshooter template. Okay? Right click, indicators, go to Trend Catcher. Okay? Go up here where it says trend measurement. Right now, this is set on seven, okay? Change that to one five to 15, hit okay, watch what happens. Boom, see those? What just happened? Boom, lined up, boom, lined up. Not that these are perfect entries here, but well, that's a good entry there. Boom, lined up. Do you see the difference there? Everybody see that? Now, let's talk about that for a minute. And I need you all to pay very close attention here. This is real simple, but if you don't do this right, you're going to screw some things up. The reason that we have the template, okay, the reason that we have the template set on 7, okay, it's because seven is a faster flip for the trend catcher, all right? So hear me out here. Hold on to your questions for a second. Hear me out. When we're trading futures and we're using eight slash 10 tick bars, what does that mean? That means that if you have an up close bar, the market has to go up eight ticks to make a new bar, right? And then go up another eight ticks to make a new up close bar. Okay, but when we're trading Forex with 312, how many ticks does the market have to go up to make a new bar? Only three ticks, 
right? So technically, a forex chart is going to make almost three new bars by the time a futures chart would make one bar. Does that make sense? And I'm going to stop right here. I need everybody's feedback. If what I just said right there does not make sense, stop me. Or otherwise, otherwise, you won't get anything I'm saying here and how to fix this. Does everybody get that? There's a big difference between a three tick bar and an eight tick bar. Because on an eight tick bar, the market has to move up eight ticks before it makes a new bar. On Forex, it's got to move up only three ticks to make a new bar. So there's almost three new bars on a Forex chart compared to one bar on a futures chart. Everybody got that? Okay. If anybody doesn't, speak up now. All right. So because we found that the better settings for futures and commodities are the 8 and 10 tick, okay, that's why we have the template set up the way it's set up. All right, that's why we have the settings in the template done a certain way. The way that most indicators work, most indicators work by looking back at X number of bars. Okay, and if X number of bars have done a certain thing or broke certain highs or lows, it plots a new indication, right? Everybody gets that. That's how in most indicators work. They look back at a certain number of bars to see, hey, is there X number of previous bars going up, going down, breaking highs, or whatever. All right. So since on Forex, it's only three ticks for a new bar, the indicators flip quicker. Does that make sense? As opposed to one up bar, it using only three ticks makes three up bars. So the indicators flip quicker. And there's certain indicators that you want to flip quicker. There's certain indicators you don't want to flip quicker, especially when you have smaller bars. You know, you might have three or four quick up bars and everything flips, and three or four quick down bar, everything flips. It can flip too fast. All right. So with Trend Catcher, we had the settings in the template to flip a little quicker because of the bigger eight tick bars. But when you have the same setting on Trend Catcher to flip quicker on these smaller bars, see this? It flips too quick. And I'll scroll back. I'm not just being picky here on just random examples. Um, now, sometimes it will flip, like right here. Here's a long. Okay, cool. You got that one. All right. Um, I'm not saying it will never flip on time, but there's a lot of times it doesn't. Here's another couple examples here. Let's take a look. Right here on this long trade. Flipped a bar too early, so you missed that trade, right? Uh, right here, flipped a bar too early, so you missed that trade. Okay. I mean, just kind of randomly, I'm not even looking at all these. I'm just kind of randomly showing you here. See this? The trend catcher flips too quick, so things are not always all lining up for you. Everybody see that? Okay. So, just as another quick example here, let me bring this chart in. So, right-click. Go to indicators, go to trend catcher, okay? Scroll up to right here, parameter trend. Trend measurement, right now it's set on seven, and that's too fast for Forex. That's too fast on three tick bars. If you're, if you're using like three, four, or five tick bars, for example, instead of seven, change it to 15 and hit okay. 
and let's just take another look here and see what happens. Boom, that one moved over, lines up. Boom, that one moved over, lines up. Boom, that one moved over. Boom, that one, yep, that one move over. Everybody get that? I'm just kind of showing you random examples here. So everybody see how now things line up because we're slowing down those flips. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, I've showed you a couple examples here just with that quick difference. Everybody see how suddenly things seem to line up, don't they? Okay, so now I want to warn you real quick here. I know what's going through some of your heads already is, oh, well, there's occasionally sometimes during the day when I'm trading YM or I'm trading in Q where I miss a couple trades here or there because it doesn't line up. So I'm going to go change all of my charts to 15. Don't do it. You'll regret it. Wrong move. Those 8 and 10 ticks charts, don't go through and change those. All right? Because you're going to miss more trades or get in later compared to the ones that you're going to gain. This is mainly just talking about Forex. Okay? So can everybody see the difference there and how suddenly that's a whole new world of trading Forex with Eyes on Sharpshooter, isn't it? Can everybody see a world of difference here now and a world of opportunities that you're not missing like you thought you were missing before? Okay, boom, and see how everything's lining up now. I mean, it opens up, boom. I mean, a ton of opportunities. A whole new world of trades here that you thought you couldn't get before. Okay, Ezra, what would the trend setting be on 31260 chart to mimic the trend catcher arrows on 2106? If you're using 2, 3, 4, 5 tick, you, you want to use the, the setting of 15, not 7. Okay, so yeah, that's right. I would still use the 15. Okay, so um, yeah, Julian, sure. When you load, all you're doing is this. When you go in and you're loading a chart and you want to load, load chart, let's just say you want to load pound dollar, okay, or any Forex pair, and you use 312 and 60, okay, and you would go and just choose your regular iZone Sharpshooter beginner template. Same template we all use now and just hit OK. Yeah, Edwin, can we use 15 or 7 for Nadex spreads too? Okay. Some people are asking, well, can I you use this for futures or for spreads? Some people are saying, well, does this apply to 6E and 6B? You're not kept, you're not getting it at all. Okay, it doesn't matter what instrument you're trading. Doesn't matter um, if you're trading futures or spot forex. Doesn't matter anything you're trading. It's simply about the bar size. Okay, forget spreads, forget futures, forget 6e or euro dollar. Or it's it's just about the bar size. Okay, on forex, most people on are, are are using 3, 12, and 60, okay? On like futures, this has nothing to do with Alchemy, Susan. We're talking about eyes on sharpshooter, okay? Because Alchemy uh, doesn't use that, okay? We're, we're just talking about eyes on sharpshooter, okay? So on Forex, we found that 3, 12, and 60, no, no problem, Susan. 3, 12, and 60 works better on Forex. On like futures and commodities, we're using the 8, 10, and 5 minute. Okay. Instruments don't matter. Spreads, futures don't matter. If you're using a bar size that this first number, okay, 3, if this first number is 5 or below, if it's 2, 3, 4, or 5, then you want to use a trend catcher setting of 15. If it's, say, 6 and up, stick with 
the seven exactly how it is. That's why the template is done that way with the setting of seven because, you know, predominantly we've started off by using it on oil and gold and NASDAQ and Dow and so on. Okay, so it's, it's set exactly where it needs to be for those main ones. All right, if you're using anything less than five, you need to set it on 15. Okay, and you'll just have to do testing on it on the different markets on 4X or 6B or 60 to see what good bar sizes are there. We don't have that all mapped out in the forum like if you're using this, do this, you're using this, do we don't have that. You'll have to test that. Okay, so just open up whatever Forex pair you're trading, do 3, 12, and 60. Okay, and let's just look at some examples here. All right, so this is just using the regular iZone Sharpshooter beginner template. Once you have it open, and let's just take a quick peek here. I mean, I'm not saying all these are valid. I'm just showing you here real quick how they line up. Okay, this one here. So like these couple here that I'm marking were too early, right? Trend catcher was too early. So you didn't take that long trade. Right here, the trend catcher was a bar too early, so you didn't take the short trade. So once it's open, you just right click, hit indicators, go to trend catcher, because it's the trend catcher that's flipping early. And you just go right up here to this O2B parameters trend, trend measurement, it says seven, just change it to 15 and hit okay. All right, because couple of you are asking, show me one more time. Now look, lines up, lines up, lines up. Does that make sense? Does everybody see how, for some of y'all that were saying, oh, iZone Sharpshooter just doesn't work that great for me on Forex. That's why I like Alchemy. Well, all of a sudden, this is a whole new world here, isn't it? Because all of a sudden, things are lining up. And you've got a whole new different world of opportunities. Make sense? I mean, you, you, you see them all over. So, again, do not go and change everything to 15 on your futures and all that. Just whatever you're trading, if it's under a bar size of 5, change it over. So now, with you seeing that, because like I said, the predominant thing we've been hearing is I prefer Alchemy on Forex because it doesn't work great on iZone Sharpshooter. Granted, now that you've got this, does it really? And I'm not dogging Alchemy. I'm just saying you need to figure that out, okay? So check that out. Now, what I'm referring to here is mainly for the trend trading, not for chop trading and all that, just for trend trading. Okay, this is a this is a this is a test for trading alchemy compared to iZone Sharpshooter for trending rules. This is not about swing trading. This is not about chop trading. This is just straight up trend trading. That's a good question, Zach. Thank you for that. So let's take a look at something here. I'm going to switch this alchemy chart over to pound dollar so that they match up. All right. And let's just look. Here's the test that I'm wanting from you guys to start playing with. Okay. So for example, this is just today. I, I haven't even really looked at this. So let's take a peek here. Right here, we got an entry. Okay, everything's lining up green. We're coming off a green eye zone. This is pound dollar. We've got a setup bar here at 41.44. So we would have entered at 41.47, right, on the eye zone sharpshooter. We would have entered right here at about 1302 today, about 102 this afternoon on this uptrend. Okay. On Alchemy, 
we would have entered the trade at about 150 and we would enter it at what about 4160 so we would enter this trade on alchemy at a price of about 4160 we got in this trade here at 4147 we got in 13 ticks earlier on iZone sharpshooter does everybody see that or do you need me to cover that again don't get me wrong I'm not dogging alchemy I'm showing you a few examples here I can also probably show you where you got some extra possible entries on alchemy I'm just wanting you to see that this is worth testing okay so everybody see the two charts side by side here this is pound dollar pound dollar this is alchemy on the left eyes on sharpshooter on the right so we, we can all see this big uptrend today on pound dollar right we see it on both charts this big uptrend correct everybody see that so on eyes on sharpshooter with the new setting of 15 coming down what are we bouncing off of here an eye zone what happens right here on this bar we have green trend catcher we have trend bands we have trend flip and we have trend R so this bar closed at 4144 you see it off to the right there so where do we get in three ticks above that right which is 4147 so we would have got in right there on this uptrend Does that make sense Mike you see that so look at the price we got in at on this trend 4147 right now also look at the bottom time stamp what's the time 1302 that means 102 Eastern time correct so if I was trading I zone sharpshooter today with the new setting of 15 on pound dollar that's what I got in 102 p.m. at a price of 4147 so I got into that trend at, at a price of 4147 now if I was trading alchemy where was the alchemy entry well we see our uptrend volatile trend line crosses over here at the close of this bar and everything lines up so what price did I get into the alchemy trade at at 4160 correct 13 ticks after 13 pips after I zone sharpshooter got me in so I got in 13 pips later and then look at the time almost 46 minutes later does everybody follow me here or is anybody confused speak up now let me know okay so everybody sees that right let's back up we also have a downtrend right here don't we okay coming off an eye zone right here we got trend catcher arrow everything's lining up red that bar closed at what 4165 so we got in three ticks below so we got in at what 4162 correct everybody follow me so we got in this downtrend at 4162 on sharpshooter where did we get into the alchemy trade 4149 12 ticks later so we got into the sharpshooter trade 12 tick 12 pips earlier you see that okay um let's see about this trade here what time was that this morning nine oh all right well if you're trading alchemy you got into it this morning you got knocked out um if you got back in and got knocked out you got back into it i guess right in here 
about 9.30 at 41.04. You got in this one at 41, about the same there, okay? But does everybody see what, does everybody get what I'm showing you here? Because what we went from before was everybody saying, I zone sharpshooter misses all the trades on FX, okay? Um, but now suddenly it, some of these bigger trades are lining up. John says, are there instances when Alchemy outperforms Sharpshooter? John, that's actually what this webinar is about, is I want you guys to tell me. I have done a little bit of back testing on this, and there are times, what, what I've seen with my little bit of back testing, that's why I'm doing this webinar is to show you guys, hey, this is what I'm focused on right now, back testing, because we thought, Man, iZone Sharpshooter's missing those Forex trades, and Alchemy's getting them. But with this setting and you put them side by side, is that the case? And that's why I said before, is one better than the other? Do we need both? Does one have better qualities than the other? Is there a way we need to mix the two? You know, what he's like, well, can we overlap something? Maybe. We want to figure that out. But first and foremost, the first thing I want to test is with these sharpshooter sharp shooter settings side by side with Alchemy. So if you're trading a couple Forex pairs, open both charts up like this and just test it and see. Or if you have some time, back test it and see. Let me know what you find. What I found just with very brief back testing is I found that on the bigger kind of trend trades, iZone Sharpshooter seems to get you in earlier and seems to get you in 6 to 15 pips earlier. Now, there are some trades that Alchemy will get you into that iZone Sharpshooter won't because with iZone Sharpshooter, we're not just randomly entering random trades. We're wanting to bounce off of iZones. So there are some trades that Alchemy will get you into Alchemy will get you into more trades than Sharpshooter will. But Alchemy also might get you into several more chop trades. So you might have more trades, but you also have more choppy or losers. So is it worth doing it or not? That's really the question. Okay. So that's what you're going to have to take a look at. So, um, Aaron says, hey, I've heard that some people like Alchemy because they don't have to worry about eye zone proximity. That's exactly true as to why some people like that. Because they're, they feel like, oh, I missed out on that trade because it wasn't close to an eye zone. Well, I like Alchemy so I don't because I don't have to worry about eye zones. Well, that may be the case. Um, and that is why some people like it uh, until they run into something like oh okay i went in short right here and then boom i got stopped out and then i went in long right and boom i got stuck and then i went if i man if i had just waited for a good trade that was probably at an i zone anyway and just taking that big one i might have been better off so yes aaron that is kind of the point is with alchemy we're not worried about the i zones so we're getting more trades but are we also getting more chop trades? Because they're not the best trades. And the best trades are waiting for things to line up at the I zones. That's the question. I'm not saying that's the case, but that's what we need to look at. Okay. Now, some people that are just stuck on I zone on alchemy for whatever reason are like, well, let's just do alchemy, but let's add on I zones. Well, if we're going to use alchemy, what are the, what are the, I mean, hey, that may not be a bad idea, that may work, but think about it. If we added I zones to this chart, what do we have on this chart? I zones, bars, trend bands, trend flip, trend R. How is that that much different than what we have on this chart? There's only one difference then. It's trend catcher compared to volatile trend line, right? 
So some people that just seem to be stuck on alchemy for whatever reason are like, well, let's just add isomers to that. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea, test it out. Maybe there's something to it. But from what I've seen, even if you had isomers on here, waiting for everything to line up, I just showed you a few examples there where sharpshooter gets you in, what was the first one? 12 ticks earlier, 14 ticks earlier. If that's the case, I zone maybe better, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not pushing it one way or the other. I want you guys to test it out. Okay. Um, not right now, Randy. We may do that in the future, but sometimes they can just flip so fast and we do have other alerts for it. Um, but we are talking about that for the future. Okay. Um, Robert, trend catcher doesn't line up if data isn't blazing fast. If all trend line is the same spot all the time. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Robert. Um, follow, trend catcher doesn't have anything to do with fast data. It's about the number of bars. There's no consistency when trend catcher lines up. That's the whole point of this webinar here is with that new setting, Trend catcher lines up a lot better. It's all about the bar sizes because there's more bars. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? And if you refresh, everything should line up there. Okay. So, um, well, Dan, you know, like Dan says, perhaps adjust volatile trend line parameters on alchemy. Well, if you do that to get it to flip quicker, you're also going to have more entries on trend on, or more potential entries on alchemy. And is that always a good thing when you're getting into these little chops? Well, we, we know that a lot more chops gonna happen between I zones. We're not using I zone. And that's now you guys see what I'm getting at here. These are all the questions we we don't know yet, we don't know the answer to. So that's why I'm trying to get you guys to hop on and help here and compare side by side. And let's see, I've had a few people that I've asked to test this side by side and the main thing I wanted to know was, okay, if you're testing side by side now with everything lining up, and the people I've asked to test this are diehard alchemy people. We love alchemy. alchemy. Alchemy works great on 4X. It didn't work on Sharpshooter. Well, now I just showed you how it does. And I've asked people, hey, give me a two, three, four day side by side and show me when alchemy outperforms. So far, they've not been able to do that, or at least they haven't done it. Okay. So test it out. I'm not promoting one way or the other. I just want to know. Because if it turns out one's better than the other, that's what we all want, right? I don't care what system it is. I don't care if it's a new system we combine. We just want what works best. So that's what I could use your help with. So if you're trading Forex or you're trading anything with these smaller bar sizes, change that setting to 15, run them side by side. Or if you've got time, just sit and back test them. Do global crosshairs and back test both and say, all right, we've got this entry here, this entry here. Yeah, we got more entries with Alchemy, but we also got more chopped out in entries and profit-wise, we ended up the same or better or worse. Test it out and see. Okay. Um, let's see here, Anthony, what I'm more concerned with, how do we know in the beginning of the morning whether it's gonna be a choppy day or something? No one knows that. That's trading. No one knows in the beginning of the day if it's gonna be choppy, trending, you know, scalping. I mean, no one knows that before the market's open. You know, that's something you have to gauge as you go is what the market, what, what is the market doing? Is it being choppy? Is it bouncing between smaller zones? Is there volume? Is there no volume? Is it breaking out of range? That's, that's the whole point. If we all knew that, we'd all be millionaires. Um, Mike, I, I don't understand your question. The same issues exist with Sprite. I don't understand at all why what this has to do with spreads. Maybe I don't understand your question. That's what I keep saying is this is not about futures or Forex or spread. It doesn't matter the instrument you're trading. It's all about bar sizes. 
If you're using these smaller bar sizes, that means more bars are created quicker, which means indicators flip quicker. So you have to make it quick flip slower. So you change it to 15. Doesn't matter if you're trading pound dollar futures, Forex, or Nadex spreads. You just want it to flip slower so it lines up. Does that, does that make sense? All you're trying to do is get the chart, the entries to line up properly. It doesn't matter what you're trading with that entry, okay? This isn't about Nadex spreads or futures. It's about getting it to line up and whatever you're trading, we just wanna know if you're trading eyes on sharpshooter or alchemy, which one works out better in the end, not just the end of the day, but after a few days and just compare them side by side. Okay, which is which is easy to do. Just have them both up side by side with whatever you're trading and see or do some back testing on it. But I just wanted to show you guys that setting because it makes all the difference. Okay. And yeah, Susan, for now, the 60 is still still the best. And some people are saying, oh, I don't get enough entries on 60, so I need to, that, that shouldn't make any difference at all. Because just because it's set on 60, it's, it's just giving you another bar at 60 minutes. It's not making something break a bar or not break a bar. Okay, it just plots another bar. It doesn't plot the market to go up or down. You know what I mean? It just plots another bar. So that's not going to determine you know, profitable or not profitable on a, on a system there. Okay. So, okay. Does that make sense? Any, any questions on that? And again, some of you are asking questions. Well, what about this? What? Well, I don't have the answer to that. This is a beta system. It's still in testing. And that's what I'm asking you to help figure out. Because for me to go through and test all this myself will take a long, long time. So I'm just trying to get a bunch of you on board to help test it. And, to let you guys see, yeah, you actually can trade iZone Sharpshooter on Forex. You just have to know the right setting. And I've showed you right there, there's plenty of great trades. So test them out, check it out, help me out with this test. Um, post your findings in the forum of, you know, hey, I found it works great on these Forex pairs, but hey, I, you know, on these, I think I like it better on Alchemy. Like, that's fine. I, I'm not wanting you to lean one way or the other here. I'm just wanting it to have a fair test so we know what's better. And you know, some, some of you guys are diehard iZone Sharpshooter fans. And you're like, I don't care about that Alchemy thing. I love Sharpshooter. And that's great, but if Alchemy is better, let's use what's better, not what we like. Some of you guys are diehard Alchemy fans. I just love Alchemy. Well, do you? And with this new setting, if it works better and gives you better entries and less chop entries, and like I just showed you on the trend entries, it gets you in 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 pips earlier, why are you stuck on alchemy? Well, because I don't want to have to look and see if it's close to an eye zone. Well, that's just laziness. If you'd rather get chopped out and get in 14 pips late because you don't want to have to look if there's an eye zone, Let's go with what what's works best, okay? I don't care what it is that ends up working best. I just think it's, you know, got to be what works best. All right. So, um, yeah, George, all of that's in the course. All of that's clearly stated in the course. It's clearly written out on the cheat sheets, what to use for Forex, what to use for uh, futures on like uh, alchemy and all that. Um, so definitely check that out, okay? All right, guys, I don't wanna keep you any longer. Hope that all makes sense. Again, this is beta, this is testing. I don't have all the answers. I'm asking you to help me figure it out. Post it in the forum, let's all together uh, test it out and share your share your findings in the forum. That way, hey, I think I'm onto something here. I've been tested on two or three pairs and I've seen this working great. So let's get you know four or five other people testing it out too. Let's let's figure this thing out together. Okay, so let's test it out. 
and see what we can come up with. All right. Um, Trevor, you can. We played with that in the past and didn't really see any difference there, but you can test that out. Okay. All right, guys, I appreciate it. I'm going to get this. I'm going to let you guys roll. I'm going to get this webinar posted for you and uh, do some testing for me. If you got time over the weekend, just pull up some charts side by side, do some back testing, you know, calculate profit and loss over. I mean, just take a couple hours out if you got it. Pull up pound dollar, euro dollar, whatever. Put these settings on and just do a back test. Pull up Alchemy for a week and say, okay. I entered here and got out here, made X pips. Lost here, lost us X pips. Where did you end up? What was your end result for the week? Then pull up iZone Sharpshooter for the same week and run it through and say, hmm, number of trades, number of losses, number of went. Where did I end up? Which one was better? Cool. Let's check out another pair. Let's back test it. Let's forward test it. Let's keep going. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll get this out there to you in the forum. Have a great night and a great day tomorrow in the trade room and a good weekend. Then we will see you again on uh, Monday and I'll be looking for your posts in the forum. Thanks for your help. Have a great one. All right. You too.